Okay, All first right. up is an update. Okay, we've updated. Uh, I realized that our old LED ring trinket kit, which people love making LED goggles, was using the old trinket. Uh, we love the old trinket, but uh, its time has come and gone. It's been upgraded. This net kit now comes with a uh, trinket M0. Same thing, and here's the good news. The code's the same, and you can also use CircuitPython. So uh, same price, uh, updated to use new SAMD21, bigger and better. We also have more Compute Module 4s. Uh, you know, these Compute Modules, we had none, and now we have a whole bunch of different kinds. This one, I want to get the exact model correct because there's so many. This one is the 32 gigabyte uh, MMC with Wi-Fi and four gigabytes of RAM. So this is like a beefy, this is like a beefy, beefy compute module. Um, it's got uh, the Wi-Fi you see there on the top left. We have the antenna kits as well. It's got flash MMC on it, so you don't need a separate um, SD card. Uh, and also it's MMC, so it's gonna be faster at 32 gigabytes and four gigabytes of RAM. So this would be actually perfect for how do you compute computational stuff and machine learning on the edge type projects because you'll need that extra RAM. All right, next up. Next up, these are adorable edge launch USB-C connectors. Um, I actually ordered these a really long time ago and they finally came in. Uh, they're interesting because normally we only have USB-C connectors that like a cable plugs into, but this plugs directly into a computer as seen on uh, the Serpenti, the um, Arturo's board that we also stock, so check that out. Um, but if you're like, hey, I want a connector like that, um, we have them. I'll show them real fast on the overhead maybe, although our photos are, are quite good. Okay, so that comes on a, a strip and you get 10. And let me show you. So here's uh, some things about it. So you're probably like, Lady Ada, I know that you don't like SMT-only connectors like this because they have a mechanical, you know, stress on them. And it's true. I wish that these had these tabs as through-hole, but they, they just weren't available. I believe this is why it took so long to get them. I was going back and forth. And I was like, can't you just bend them? And they're like, no. So this is a fully surface mount, single-sided um, connector. So you're going to want to look at the data sheet because what you do is on the PCB, you actually have this part be a large SMT pad. Like... There's these four little pads. I'm talking about the middle part here. You actually use that as an SMT pad to give you some mechanical strength. Um, these are the pinouts. The pins are not the same pins as the USB-C socket connector that we use. Check the data sheet. It's, it's not intuitive. They're, they kind of come out in a slightly interesting order. Um, and then here there's a little cap. I don't know why there's a cap, maybe to protect it. And then um, this is the USB-C plug. So this plugs into the computer and then you can you know, plug it either way and um, you have a USB-C connection. So, you know, I don't see a lot of devices that plug directly into USB-C, but I thought this was kind of a unique and interesting uh, connector. And in case I ever did want to use it for something, I wanted to have them in stock. So uh, now we do too. All right, next up we have two versions of what I think is gonna be the Hello World for machine learning. Mm. Yeah, machine learning is really fun. You hear a lot about it, and maybe you want to play around with it. Especially, in my opinion, the most interesting machine learning is vision recognition, because we're humans, we see stuff, and maybe we want to make machines see stuff and recognize what they're seeing. Um, vision has historically been incredibly, incredibly hard to do with computers. Like, there's all jokes about how, like, you know, 30, 40 years ago, it's like, how hard could it be to recognize what bird is in front of a camera? Turns out, really heckin' hard. But with uh, machine learning, uh, it's actually not too difficult. Well, I mean, it's still difficult, but you have a much better chance of training it because our machines have gotten faster. We've figured out ways of convincing computers what they're looking at and how to let them differentiate what they're looking at. So, um, you know, people can use machine learning on their phones, you can use it on your computer, but maybe you want to have a device, like something that's a standalone device that can do machine learning vision recognition for you. So we bring the BrainCraft hat, we released it a couple months ago, we've done projects with it. It's you know basically designed to plug into a Raspberry Pi 4 and make it easy for you to design any kind of machine learning project, particularly vision projects, because it's got a little display on it that you can see what it's seeing, which I think is really helpful because you're trying to like debug what is being recognized. So 
Um, you've got a Raspberry Pi 4, and you've got the BrainCraft hat, and you've got the Raspberry Pi camera, and here it is all plugged in together. Okay, great, an SD card. But now you actually have to, you have to actually train the model, right? You have to train the vision. And historically, this has been really, really hard to do. You've had to like get all these photos, and you've had to tag them, and you have to classify them, and it's just like it's been really not fun to do. Um, like I did it once, and it was like you spend, you know, days training your model, um, use all this compute time, and then in the end, it's like maybe it works, and you have to start over from the beginning. And that's where um, Loeb comes in. So Loeb is this free software from Microsoft that you use in a browser. And what's neat about it is it does all the hard parts of machine learning where you don't have to collect data, instead it just uses your computer camera. And you know you train the different classifications and then it does the computation for you and it spits out this file. You put the file onto your Raspberry Pi and suddenly, ding dong, the Raspberry Pi can recognize whether a package has been left in front of your door or what kind of plant is on top of your desk or you know you can play rock, paper, scissors and it can recognize your hand gestures without you having to type in like rock. It's a, you, just, you just make the fist or a plane or your, your two fingers and it knows if it's rock, paper, or scissors. So really basic machine learning stuff, but again, historically really tough to do. How do you recognize when there's a bird at your bird feeder? Let you know or take a photo of it so you can go and like watch some cool birds. Um, or maybe there's a squirrel and it shouldn't be a squirrel and you want it to like scare the squirrel away. All these fun projects you can build, recognizing things. I saw a project on the Raspberry Pi blog, recognizing when there's a dog outside, being walked outside your apartment. So you can go outside and maybe pet the dog or just look at the adorable dog. Um, all these vision projects, you can do with machine learning and you train it using Loeb and it makes it really easy. So easy that a school kid can do it, which means also PhD students can do it. Those are kind yeah. of equivalent things to me. So I have two versions, one without and one with. This is the one with a Raspberry Pi. That's right. All this stuff. There's the one without. The only reason is a lot of people already have a Raspberry Pi 4 or Pi 400. Yeah. And they're looking they want, for something to do with them. They want something to do with one them. One of these. So... There's an all-in-one kit that has everything you need. It's got like the uh, the power supply, even it's got the uh, uh, the fan. It's got the BrainCraft hat. It's got uh, cables and everything. And then, of course, if you don't have a Raspberry Pi four, pick up the one with a Raspberry Pi four. Okay. Two versions. Next up. Next up, kale sockets. Uh, these are this is kind of cool. Looks like a little alien friend. These are sockets that are used for MX mechanical keypad switches. And what it means is you don't have to solder in the mechanical key anymore, which is awesome. Um, folks who have done mechanical keyboards for a while, remember, you used to have to solder them in. Well, like a year or two ago, I think, Kale, the company, I'll uh, just print it on this, came up with these sockets. And you can see it here um, on the back of one of our Neo key breakouts. And when you solder the socket in, and it's really easy to solder, it's like the pads are really large. It, um, and, you know, the, the other side has little two holes in it, and you can plug in a mechanical key switch, and you don't have to solder it in. It isn't like a perfect, permanent, you know, connection. You do have to add a little bit of mechanical support, but the electrical connection and, like, the basic mechanical connection is done for you. Let me see if I have... Okay, let me, um, let me show on the overhead real fast. I'll show it with the other new product, the... Uh, feathering. So I've got here a feathering, a PCB with two mechanical key switches in it. Yes, you clicky, clicky, clicky. Okay, but what if I'm like, oh, I don't want this kind of clicky. I want a different kind of clicky. I want a Gateron switch. I want an MX blue. I want an MX red. I want MX gray, whatever. These, um, you just pull them out carefully, and you can see the socket is flat against the PCB. You can kind of see here the two sockets here coming out. And then on the back, those uh, two sockets are soldered onto the back of the PCB. So this makes it really easy for you to, you know, flip around different switches, customize them. Um, and then again, you saw it is possible to pull them off. They're mechanically stable if you're only pressing down, but if you end up, you know, pressing from the side, they, they do tilt. So that's why you might want to use a little bit of glue or epoxy just to kind of give them a little bit more strength. Still enough that you could pull it off if you really had to or wedge it off, but enough that you could uh, switch up keys. So, chaos sockets, um, and they come in a pack of 20. Next up. Translucent keycaps. As seen on our keycap projects, uh, these allow light to shine through them. They're translucent. They're a little bit uh, big, they're not symmetric, but um, they're fairly inexpensive, and as seen here, 
uh, LEDs shine through them quite nicely. Note that because most keys, you're wondering like, why doesn't the whole key cap light up? Um, the way the LEDs on mechanical keys and key switches work is they, they don't come from the center, they come along the side. That's a, a normal thing for key caps and they're all like this. So even though the whole thing is translucent, you're not gonna get full translucency across the whole body of it. That's just sort of part of the deal with mechanical key switches. Um, that said, you know, they fit very nicely onto any MX compatible uh, key switch. Uh, Kale boxes are shown here or um, Cherry MXs or Gaterons or, or any of those uh, compatibles. Um, they click on, they're completely, you know, 90 degree symmetric, so you can put them on any which way. And uh, like I said, they do allow your glowy light to shine through. Yeah. Clicky, clicky. All right, and the star of the show tonight besides you, Lady Ada, and our community is... The Neo Key Feather Wing. Yay, so much keyboard stuff coming out. So uh, we had last week the individual Neo Key um, breakouts, right, which uh, I even think we had... Hold on. There's this. Uh, There's this. Yes. No, no, I can't see. Oh, sorry, this one. Pardon like me. That. So that's the individual ones, right? So this is showing a cutie pie with two individual key switches wired together. But you're like, I have a feather, and I don't want to wire up two individual switches. Great. We have this feather wing. The feather wing has two kale sockets and two neopixels in it. Uh, they're wired up directly to pins like five, six, and nine. And, and it's just like two key switches and they're on a feather wing and you can turn it into a little keyboard if you want. You can make it into a MIDI controller or HID or really anything you like. Um, sky's the limit, as it were. Okay. And uh, let me see if I can find my plug so I can show the, the live demo. So let's go to the overhead and shoot off. And thank you. Um, okay, so you've got here if I press these, they turn off. Very handy for showing the demo. So this is just uh, plugged on top of a feather. It's a standard feather wing shape. It'll fit on any feather uh, we have. Uh, the only one I'd warn is the ESP8266. It doesn't have a lot of pins. It'll still work, but you're, you're kind of using the, the only three GPIO you've got. Um, you can s plug in any MX compatible switch you like. And you can see there's uh, nice bright NeoPixels that shine through. Um, and we use Kale sockets. And there's a little reset button as well, so you can reset the board. You can also change which pins um, the NeoPixel and the switches are connected to, if you wish. Uh, there's little jumpers on the bottom. Unplug this so you can show you. There's a little jumper. You can cut this and rewire if you if you want to, but uh, I kind of picked what I thought were pretty good defaults. And then you put whatever keypad you want on the top, and you're good to go. Um, I will note that this product does not come with the key switches, and it does not come with... Uh, the keycaps either like it comes just like that and uh we will be stopping yeah, it's in the photo it's in the photo but we will i, I want to demonstrate we will be stopping we have to keys. we have to show how it works and we, we have, have to show, show the, the things that it works with yeah and then the neopixels are tied together in a row so they just it just looks like an, an led strip of like two neopixels basically um they're not even though like it only turns off when i don't press it they're not actually connected i have a little bit of code that's reading the key presses and changing you know which ones are lit so they're independent uh, elements. I want to make that clear. And that's the point.